Okay. So hi guys, this is Yadi. I'm here with one of my good friends, Louis. Um, he is a nurse I've worked with for a few years. Um, a very, very good friend, a dear friend to me. And um, I wanted to speak to him. Um, I wanted this to be one of my first videos because you just got into CRNA school. He is going to be starting very soon. He's actually leaving tomorrow to go handle some business there. And um, he got into CRNA school through a non-traditional route, kind of a, you know, a route that not many people know about. So I thought this would be great to start by interviewing you and, and, you know, hearing your take on how did you do this. So tell us more about yourself. Louis. Okay. Hi, guys. My name is Louise. Um, well, I've been a nurse for four years now. Uh, I work at a uh, big institution uh, in New York City. So uh, I recently got into CRNA school. I'm actually starting next week. Um, so I'm here with Yadi to have a little talk about it. Uh, and, you know, we're going to go over questions and um, my way to CRNA school and like in terms of how I got in, um, my school search, as well as the interview process, um, and also how I feel before I start school. <laughs> Yes, yes, yes. I'm so proud of you. I know I told you this like a million times already, but I'm so, so, so proud <laughs> Thank of you. Thank you. Backstory, I, we started, I, I think I maybe was like two years on the floor when you started. And from like the beginning, I was like, you were a little bit different. Like you weren't the regular orientee. Like you always were so motivated, always like taking on more than, you know, you would expect you to take on. And, and you did so much in the Thank you. few years that I've known you. Like, amazing. But um, yes, yes, you know, I love you. So um, <laughs> what made you want to become a CRNA? So, so I, I, I actually, yeah. uh, part as a new grad uh, residency, we got the chance to participate in uh, the residency program at the hospital that I used to work for. And to be uh, to graduate from that residency program, uh, you have to do two shadowing sessions uh, with any okay. specialty within the hospital that you would like to. So I chose to shadow a uh, CRNA at work actually, and I had very positive experience uh, with that. And from shadowing, I see that you know how. Uh, as a CRNA, you there for the patients on a one-to-one -one patient care. And it's very hand-on experience. Like you get to uh, intubate the patients, you line the patient with like arterial lines, central line, you also do nerve block, uh, you do epidural, you basically do everything, which I really appreciate because I love the hand-on patient care. Um, and also you are the one who's there and advocate for the patient when they go under anesthesia. If something happened to the patients, you there for them uh, during the most vulnerable time. Like I see, like you know, if the patients become unstable, uh, use the one who push all these potent medications, and you will see like a quick response, quick changes uh, that you can make a big difference uh, in terms of uh, saving the patient's life, as well as like you know, pain control wise as well. So mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. you know, like you there, you monitor them. The mo you see if you know. Um, you can see whether, um, you, because the patient can speak to you, so you have to mm -hmm. respond to them and monitor them using the vital signs, for example. Like if you know, if you see that their heart rate is creeping up, like uh, tachycardia, you can try they give them some pain medications because you know mm -hmm. they in pain. Surgery is painful. Mm -hmm. Um, you're also paralyzing the patients too, and that's not a very pleasant experience. So you want to make sure you have enough sedation for them as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. So your assessment skills have to be on point. You yep. know, you just have to, you know, really yes. know what you're doing and know what you're getting into. Um, Definitely. So your experience, um, you are a CCRNA. Well, first of all, give us your, your credentials because you have a whole <laughs> bunch. 
<laughs> credentials. I don't want to get it yep. wrong. Uh, so, well, I'm a BSN RN. Uh, I also uh, a critical care registered nurse, uh, certified critical care uh, registered nurse. So I have CCRN uh, as well. Uh, I also uh, have a subspecialty certification as well uh, in cardiac medicine, which is uh, what I was uh, interested in. So I studied for that and I also took the test. Yeah. So that's my yes, full credential. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. So you um, got certified um, as a CCRN through yeah. your um, ICU experience in the PACU, not on a traditional ICU floor. You went through the PACU route. So what was your daily duties on the PACU? What the type of ICU patients did you see? How often did you see ICU patients? Can you go into that? Uh, yes, so I the PACU I work at is not a regular like traditional or like a regular PACU would be. Um, at my institutions, the main PACU that I work for, uh, well, I used to work for, uh, they actually um, we intake um, overflow ICU patients. So somebody you walk in, you can have a MICU patient, you have a, a surgical ICU patient. Uh, you also can walk in with a neuro ICU patient as well. Wow. And yeah. um, like any anything like, you know, that if the ICU does not have bed or does not have the staffing for, they come to us. Uh, so I did get a wide range of experience uh, with ICU patients because you have to be trained for everything. But at some point, we also took care of uh, pediatrics ICU patient as well. So, oh, wow. uh, so we wow. were trained for all of the... Uh, you know, we were trained for all the patient populations. Uh, we also, the first to float to the ICU if they also need staff. And our PACU uh, used to be also took care of CB ICU patient as well. Wow. But we don't wow. see them uh, uh, anymore. But uh, mainly MICU and surgical. MICU and surgical. And you yeah. said pediatric patients. Like, uh, what was the youngest patient you would see, like, in, in the PACU? Like we usually receive the, uh, I would say like the, like around like 19 years old. Okay. Uh, I mean, the youngest okay. I saw was like 14 who come in okay. for like scoliosis uh, surgery, mm -hmm. uh, surgery and they needed like chest tubes and all the other stuff. Okay. Yes, but, okay. Uh, you know, we, we see it in the range of like adolescents, but not really uh, like, you know, okay. uh, infants or <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. an actual child because that they very specialized yeah definitely definitely but uh, that's that's amazing like even though you know i've worked there with you like i didn't i didn't even really know all of that you yeah know, before, so but, yeah, yeah no like the which is very um an interesting experience that i had because well at first to give you a little background i did apply to a surgical icu and i got the offer and then um while waiting to transfer internally, I um, the the surgical ICU had to go through uh, a whole change and the redesign of the unit and stuff. So they decided to uh, hold my transfer. But then I um, the the opportunity actually uh, came up with a PACU, and I actually spoke with the PACU manager, and she's like, "Oh yes, like you know, if you." Uh, we do get ICU patient here if you need the ICU experience uh, and you you can volunteer and, you know, be proactive uh, by volunteer taking a challenging assignment, like, you know, uh, which we, what I used to do, like when working in the PACU, I um, always volunteer to take uh, on ICU patients and that's how I learn. And with our ICU patients, we, they, fully vented on uh, multi vasoactive drugs like you know you can see levo neo vaso dobutamine dopamine and pretty much a lot of medications and sedation too like propofol presidex fentanyl like you will see wide range and occasionally you do see like you know patient with devices like crt ecmo those more of during the um the COVID time so like those uh, COVID, like non-COVID patients would like bore in the PACU and that way you see them. And uh, yeah, and also during COVID, I was in the COVID ICU for a few months as well. Yeah, yeah. So and, you and see a was... full range. Okay. Like you get to do patients like, you know, like it's 
it's very I don't know. I got I managed like three ICU patients and most care was there um, and they fully uh, like vented on multi drips. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And also like, you know, you also uh, got trained for devices like CRT, ECMO and all these devices to keep your wow. patient alive. Yes. Wow. Yeah. You you definitely did a lot, and and you also have leadership skills because I remember speaking to you. Uh, your last few weeks there, you were charged. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you were, yeah, you were charged. Yeah, so you definitely yeah. that also will help with the CRNA school. Uh, yeah. you know, um, being definitely take a initiative in terms of leadership, like you know, uh, take on roles, be in charge, uh, serve the preceptor. Uh, as well as, you know, uh, participate in the unit practice councils or uh, take on role of the champions on the unit. Uh, you know, so those uh, help to boost your resume up and, uh, you know, make you stand amazing. out for CRNA school. <laughs> amazing, you. amazing. So let's get into that process. Let's get into the, the meat and potatoes. So I'm, I'm going to let you go for it, but how, how, what was that process like? What schools did you apply to? What was the interview process like? And, you know, we'll go into finances and all of that as well, but go ahead. Yeah. So, so. when I, well, I, once I knew that I, you know, I'm interested in uh, taking the route in, uh, in anesthesia. So I mm -hmm. knew that I had to get my critical care experience. So uh, I start to look up like other school requirements. What do I need? I, um, so I knew I need uh, critical care experience. That's why I start applying to the surgical ICU or, you know, the, I knew that I would get ICU experience in the PACU too. So I, uh, and as that opportunity came, so I took that. Uh, and then I also start uh, doing school research to see what school I want to apply to. How many schools do I want to apply to? And uh, when I choose school, I take into consideration of, you know, the class size, um, the locations, and also finance is very important in the school search too. Like you have to know how much uh, estimate, like, you know, in terms of tuitions, living expenses, and also the school location matters uh, a lot because uh, it would like kind of give you an idea of uh, how much money you need to save up before you can go to school because mm -hmm. uh, if you choose somewhere like you know in a big city like New York the living standard is very high so you need yeah. a lot more saving for rent okay. and for food so for myself I chose in a very rural area so I um, so my living standard uh, the living standard there is not as high as uh, New York City so I'd be saving money on rent on food uh, and as well and also the school that I'm going to is uh, the tuition is also really cheap um, so I make a list of, you know, uh, five to seven schools that I want to apply and look at the requirements and start working on those. So um, I knew that I needed my certification. So I, that's why uh, I start studying for my CCRN and then uh, to make myself stand out uh, from all the applicants pools. I took another sec, uh, a second certification. Uh, so I, that's why I had two certifications. And uh, as well as, you know, working on your leadership experience, like, you know, let your nurse manager know that, you know, you're interested in stepping up and take the challenge of, you know, um, precepting, uh, participate in meetings or uh, do quality improvement projects. Mm -hmm. uh, they're very big on that as well. So yeah, um, yeah. You know, yeah. so I, um, so yeah, so like for, uh, I did like two uh, projects when I was uh, working. So I, I put those projects on my resume as well. And, um, and also okay. did uh, publish a paper uh, when I was in, oh, yeah. uh, in school as well. So mm -hmm. that also will help a lot as well. Do you mind, what was the paper about? Do you mind? Oh, no. So, uh, yeah, my paper was about um, we looking at all these um, evidence based uh, triage tools that was used on uh, older adult populations uh, in the ED. So that okay. was my concentration uh, back in school. I uh, was interested in emergency, which I don't know why. <laughs> uh, so, and then we also did a focus uh, on the geriatric population. So, um, so that why I, me and my professor, we decided to review these tools and look at that, uh, look at the tools, uh, 
like you know how accurate like those tools can predict the older adults patient populations uh, outcomes when they present to the 